Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to yet another Destiny 2 Forsaken video and today I'll be talking to you guys about how you can get to 600 power level fairly easily and quickly. Now before we talk about, you know, the grind from 560 to 600, which is for the most part what this video is going to be focusing on, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the 500 to 560 grind because I do realize there are some people that haven't had a chance to really grind out this expansion that much and they might still be stuck at those, you know, 520, 530 levels. So the first thing you want to do is before power level 520, you can do all sorts of different daily and weekly milestones that reward you powerful gear. These will of course include things like strikes, crucible, gambit, flashpoint, ikora, and so much more. The list really just goes on. Now post 520 power, these typically will provide a much smaller increase to your total power level. Nightfalls for example will give you a plus 5 until power level 540, and anything petrol related on the Dreaming City gives you a massive boost all the way up to 560. After 560, you're really going to start to slow down as almost all normal milestones will begin to give you a plus one powerful drop. For the most part, these become obsolete unless you're swapping high weapons across characters with lower powered armor. As soon as you get to power level 560, the first thing you want to complete is the Last Wish Raid for maximum efficiency as it provides you with the biggest boost possible as quickly as possible. Now, the only instance where you may not want to do this and you actually want to hold off is if you have lots of gear that's staggered in terms of their power level. So as an example, you could have gear ranging from 15 different power levels and that's not really a good idea going into the raid because you could really get screwed over. If that ever happens, especially when you're above 560 power, you want to load up a Nightfall with easy burns and farm it with a high powered level team. Now what I would recommend is putting on Solar Singe with Heavyweight and just going in there with Sleepers or even Whispers, the EP Shotgun and slaughtering everything and speedrunning them. Now Blues will drop at random 5 power levels under your total power level. This will help you balance out most of the weapons and armor you have on a specific character so everything will actually have, you know, a fairly similar power level overall. You're not going to have anything that's totally dragging your entire power level down. You know, for example, if you're 540 and you have something at like 520, that's not going to be the case if you do this Nightfall strategy. Now, the raid is the first thing you want to do every single week because it'll spring forward your character on day one, leaving you with seven prime engrams throughout the week, all of which will be higher and scale with your level due to the raid. Once you're done with the raid, you can continue to do some weekly and daily milestones to up some of your gear that's trailing far behind your high power leveled items. Once this is done, you want to jump into a tier 4 heroic blind well event that has a recommended power level of 580. You want to do this well before power level 580 as it'll boost your items potentially up to 10 power levels. When you get higher in power, this increase will be substantially lowered, so do this as soon as the raid is over with. You also want to complete Dreaming City powerful drops as soon as possible which will give you a 2-5 to five power level increase if you are under power level 580 but over power level 560. Hawthorne Clan XP works the same way as Dreaming City and it'll scale accordingly. Everything else will give you small gains if you're over power level 560 already. This includes the Flashpoint, Nightfalls, Dailies, Weeklies, Ikora, and even the Spider Weekly Bounty. Now side note, the Spider Weekly Bounty has a significant chance at dropping an exotic, so make sure that you're popping fire team medallions whenever doing those, especially if your whole fire team has those active. Once all these high power drops are done, preferably on Tuesday or Wednesday, you want to complete all of your regular milestones to inch your way forward. You may have noticed that the Iron Banner powerful drop rewards up to 5 power levels higher, which is actually really good unless you're already above 580 power. Then it'll most likely be a 1-2 to two power increase just like all the other activities. Complete this once your gear is relatively balanced and remember you can do the Nightfall trick if any of your items fall behind throughout your leveling process process. When you've done all the high power and regular powerful drops on a character, you can switch characters and do the exact same thing in the same order. Except this time around, you want to do several regular powerful drops before entering the raid on your other character. That way you can raise your armor level and kind of close that gap between the weapons and armor. This way you won't get screwed during your raid when a power weapon drops, especially if your weapons and armor are very close together. You can repeat this on three characters 
those and then you'd be pretty close to 580 on a couple of them. Once all of that is done, the only option that you really have, and even though it's a good option, is to grind out prime engrams. It does feel like Bungie significantly reduced the drop rate of these, so farming in the engine room of the Leviathan raid is not a bad idea. They tend to drop 6 power levels higher than your maximum power level when you're between 580 and 600 power, and possibly more if you're lower than 580. So these are always a safe bet, but again, it will take you a pretty long time to grind these out. I believe they did lower the rate due to all the prime endgam glitches that were out there. I personally didn't partake in any of that, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, we all have to suffer a little bit as a community due to those glitches. Whenever you're running any activities or powerful rewards, make sure your entire fire team once again has a fire team medallion popped. You won't believe how much of a difference these make when you're on the hunt for new forsaken exotics. If you ever do get one to drop, you can expect these to drop 3 power levels higher than your max if you're above 580. This also goes for any exotic quest items you may have not done on your other characters. If at any point your primary is lacking heavily, I would definitely recommend running the chaperone quest on another character and it'll drop 3 power levels higher than your max power level on that character. This can make a pretty big difference if your primary is suffering significantly. Now to sum it up in one concise and easy to understand manner, powerful rewards drop at a power level that is determined by your max level and the recommended activity power level. Tier 1 drops are 520 recommended and these include things like the daily and weekly drops in Crucible, Vanguard, and Gambit. Tier 2 are 540 and they include the Nightfall the weekly spider bounty plus the heroic adventure. Now tier 3 are 560 and they include all of Petra's bounties that are weekly and even the ascendant challenges. Tier 4 includes the raid, unstable charges in the blind well known as heroic blind wells and of course prime engrams which scale in a different way so I should probably call those maybe like tier X because they're not really tier 4 as they're always going to scale to your level and even if you're like 590 they'll still drop 6 power levels high higher than your overall max level. The last thing I'd like to mention is that having duplicate characters is pointless as drops will not scale if you switch armor from one character to the other. Ultimately, a lot of this does come down to RNG and you may get screwed over even if you use these types of techniques to your advantage. But if you do follow this strategy and have a little bit of luck on your side, then you'll be 600 in only a couple short weeks. Hell, I'm 585 right now and I only have two characters, so that just goes to show you that that this definitely does work. My other friend who's been doing the exact same thing as me has three characters and he's at 595. So yeah, if you follow this, you guys should be leveling up fairly quickly and at the same time getting lots of new Forsaken exotics at the same time. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed or learned something, a like rating would be very much appreciated. Subscribe for more daily Destiny 2 content. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all later. Peace.